Mystical experiences represent a fundamental dimension of human existence. These experiences are commonly reported across all cultures. A mystical experience subjectively is characterized by encountering the divine in a way that disrupts the normal sense of self. The definitions of mystical experience used in research and clinical publications vary considerably, ranging from upheaval of the total personality to definitions such as everyday mysticism. American psychologist and philosopher William James believed the mystical experience was at the core of religion and believed that such experiences led to the founding of the world's religions. In his book, Varieties of Religious Experience, James described mystical experiences as having ineffability or defined description, a noetic quality in that it feels as if you're accessing some kind of special knowledge, temporal transiency in that it feels outside of our normal sense of time, and passivity where the participant feels as if he were grasped and held by a superior power. To learn more about the ineffable quality of these experiences, see this video of British philosopher Alan Watts describing mystical experiences from a Zen perspective. Mystical Experiences and Psychopathology Surveys assessing the occurrence of mystical experience in the general population indicate that they are quite common and that the incidence has been rising. For 40 years, the Gallup poll has posed the question, have you ever been aware of or influenced by a presence or a power, whether you call it God or not, which is different from your everyday self? As you can see, the percentage of people reporting such experiences has risen considerably from 27% in 1973 to 70% in 2001. Biologist Rupert Sheldrick discusses the surprising prevalence of mystical experiences among the general population in this video. Surveys show that most clinicians do not currently view mystical experiences as pathological. To some degree, this reflects a change partly attributable to Dr. Abraham Maslow, who was a founder of humanistic psychology in the 1960s and then went on to found transpersonal psychology. Maslow thought that mystical experiences were an important aspect of everyday psychological functioning. This healthy view of mystical experiences was corroborated in research that found that people reporting mystical experiences scored lower on psychopathology scales and higher on measures of psychological well-being than control subjects. Yet historically, mental health theory and diagnostic classification systems have tended to either ignore or pathologize such intense religious and spiritual experiences. Some clinical literature has described the mystical experience as symptomatic of ego regression, borderline psychosis, a psychotic episode, or temporal lobe dysfunction. As an example, Dr. Sigmund Freud reduced the oceanic experience of mystics to infantile helplessness and a regression to primary narcissism in his book Civilizations and Its Discontents. Associated Clinical Problems Case studies document instances where mystical experiences are disruptive and distressing, and this is one type of spiritual problem that therapists see frequently. In a survey, psychologists reported that 4.5% of their clients over the past 12 months brought a mystical experience into therapy. Mystical experiences can be overwhelming for individuals who don't already have a strong sense of self. Some people can become frightened and confused by the sudden influx of spiritual consciousness. One of the main risks observed following ecstatic mystical experiences is ego inflation, in which the individual develops highly grandiose beliefs or even delusions about their own spiritual nature and attainment. Dr. David Lukoff experienced this inflation in a spiritual crisis in his early 20s, believing that for a while he was the reincarnation of Buddha and Christ. Click here to see his lecture at Santa Rosa Junior College where he describes his experience. Differential diagnosis between a mystical experience and psychotic symptoms. There is evidence for a type of brief psychotic episode that is related to a religious or spiritual problem. During this time, components of a person's personality are undergoing rapid change. Or as psychologist John Weir Perry put it, 
there is every indication that this process emerges as the psyche's own way of dissolving old states of being and of creatively forming visions of a renewed self and of a new design of life. Recognizing the hidden potential for personal growth within these experiences, Dr. David Lukoff has created a series of diagnostic criteria for identifying cases of mystical experiences which may overlap with symptoms normally considered to be psychotic. Originally published in 1985 in an article entitled The Diagnosis of Mystical Experiences with Psychotic Features, these criteria have been developed based on literature reviews and 30 years of clinical experience, but have not been subjected to any prospective studies to determine their validity. The first step is to determine if the person's episode has a phenomenological overlap with a mystical experience. The five criteria by which this can be identified are ecstatic mood. The most consistent feature of the mystical experience is elevation of mood. Lasky describes it as a state with feelings of new life, another world, joy, salvation, perfection, satisfaction, glory. A sense of newly gained knowledge, feelings of enhanced intellectual understanding, and the belief that the mysteries of life have been revealed are commonly reported in mystical experiences. Perceptual alterations. Mystical experiences often involve perceptual alterations ranging from heightened sensations to auditory and visual hallucinations. Visual and auditory hallucinations with religious content are also common. For example, St. Teresa saw angels. An absence of conceptual disorganization. Some psychotic patients have cognitive deficits which cause them difficulty with their basic thought processes. For example, a person with schizophrenia complained, I get lost in the spaces between words and sentences. I can't concentrate. Along with the first four criteria of ecstatic mood, a sense of newly gained knowledge, perceptual alterations, and an absence of conceptual disorganization, is that any delusions the person may experience will have themes related to mythology. In his book, The Far Side of Madness, Dr. John Weir Perry points out that below the surface level of specific identities and beliefs are thematic similarities in the accounts of patients whose psychotic episodes have good outcomes. Some of the most commonly held mythical delusions are related to a confrontation with death or actually thinking that you're dead, being reborn into a new identity or as a king or messiah figure like Jesus, the sense of being on a journey or a mission, finding yourself in the middle of a cosmic conflict, for example, between good and evil, and the feeling that we're entering into a radically new society or new age. In contrast, not all delusions have content related to mythic themes. Here are some of the non-mythological delusions held by some of Dr. Lukov's schizophrenia patients. A transmitter has been implanted in my brain and broadcasts all my thoughts to others. The mafia is poisoning my food and trying to kill me. The person claiming to be my wife is only impersonating her. She's not my wife. Familiarity with the range and variation of content in myth, religion, and psychosis is essential for determining which delusions have mythic themes. This video graphically and creatively illustrates the overlap between psychotic and mystical experiences, which the author Sean Blackwell refers to as a bipolar awakening. Prognostic signs are also indicative of positive outcome. In addition to evaluating the content of these experiences, research-validated prognostic indicators also help predict positive long-term outcome. Good prognostic indicators include good pre-episode functioning, an acute onset of symptoms during a period of three months or less, stressful events happening prior to the psychotic episode, and a positive exploratory attitude towards the non-ordinary experience. The final criterion is that the person is not a significant risk for homicidal or suicidal behavior. Psychotic disorders can be the basis for homicide and suicide. Both John Lennon and President Reagan were shot by people with previously diagnosed psychotic disorders. In 1994, Dr. Lukoff, together with Drs. Francis Liu and Robert Turner, proposed a diagnostic category that was accepted in the DSM-IV. This new V-code, religious or spiritual problem, 
represented the recognition by the psychiatric mainstream that religious and spiritual experiences, which may appear to be mental disorders, may in fact be religious or spiritual conflicts. The acceptance of this new category was an important milestone in the growing recognition of mystical experiences as not only non-pathological, but potentially beneficial for personal growth. Building on the growing interest of this largely misunderstood phenomenon, Dr. Lukoff created SpiritualCompetency.com, a website where he provides a number of accredited continuing education courses for mental health professionals. Each course presents the latest clinical and research findings from the rapidly expanding literature on religious and spiritual issues in mental health, wellness, and treatment. This video is based on the continuing education course, Mystical Experiences as a Type of DSM-4-TR Religious or Spiritual Problem, which has additional information and links to online resources, particularly research in this area. For more information, please visit Dr. Lukoff's website at spiritualcompetency.com.